you know, there's this constant struggle of bigger versus better. And and yes, I know more is usually what we want, more money, more opportunity, bigger things. Uh, but sometimes you've got to accomplish that and stay local, serve the people you care about, serve those who need you. And that's what our guest has done today. Margie Tassif shares her story of grit next. This is a dash of grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things. Now, podcasting from Spire to leaders in local communities like yours, here is Brian Leflock. And let's get cooking. So this show is about grit, and grit is problems that people overcome and the way uh, that they overcome them to get things done. And, and the story I have to share here is that I think I was one of those problems for, for my <laughs> for my guest today. I was a seller of radio advertising in a, in a previous life for 20 years, and I did it right here in Mansfield and Ashland. And I'm honored to have my old boss on the show today, Margie Tassif. Uh, she is market president for iHeart Media, Ashland and Mansfield. That is Y105 and WMAN and WNCO and Fox and Fox. And there's seven different radio Absolutely. stations. And Margie, if you can overcome me, you can overcome anything. <laughs> Now, I, I take exception to that, Brian, because first of all, I'm not your old boss. I'm your, well, I'm your former boss. And <laughs> okay, good. well done. And secondly, good point. I have to say that, uh, Brian, you were probably one of the most creative sellers I've ever had. You, you really <laughs> knew how to solve things. And that's, but yes, but to some of the things, if you, you question things and that's good, that's always a good thing. But for your listeners out there, I will say before he was a seller, <laughs> He was on the air as the Rush Man. So I think oh. you know, when we debuted Y105, you were there. So you kind of did it all. You had a feel for the whole broadcast thing. And you're a fellow Ashland grad, just like me. So yeah, yeah we've known each other for a long time. And, and uh, you know, I think maybe you said it, creativity causes its own level of problems, doesn't it? If we all just kind of did the same old thing, it'd be easy. But we we keep stirring it up, don't we? Yeah, we do. But then if you don't have creativity, nothing changes. So uh, you got to have that. <laughs> That's for sure. So Margie, again, thank you so much for being on the thank show and, and talking about some of the, the things I imagine I might remember some of the things you talk about, but perhaps there's some things that are new too. So I will try to shut my trap and let you tell the story. And we'll start with that. Margie, I haven't been around the radio stations for 10 years now. What's what's new? What's great? What's success mean right now for the, the iHeart radio stations? Well, right now, uh, we're proud to be. I mean, I think when you first started back, uh, we had two stations uh, at the time. So obviously we've grown to seven uh, and part of that has come through mergers. Part of that has come through adding uh, different stations just here recently. As I said, one of our, our proudest things is if we just added a new station called The Breeze. I say just added, but it all seems with the pandemic in the middle, it just kind of seems like yeah. January was just yesterday. At any rate, so we've added that. So very proud of those things. You know, when you talk about current successes, there's a lot of things that you could talk about. You know, we build this, we talk to this many people, but actually I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish through this period of time during the pandemic. Uh, you know, when this happened, we had to immediately think, okay, we have to keep our people safe. We can't be in the office. So how do we do that? Well, we were blessed to have technology or who'd have thought we can send people home and they can do their show live from there. And that was fantastic. Uh, we had the technology to be able to work from home from our sellers. So we didn't really miss a beat with that. You know, obviously there were Zoom calls, but then we had the opportunity to keep our listeners informed. You know, as soon as, you know, COVID was, I guess I, I just want to say it's at its height, but it, when we were first learning about it, people need information. So we made sure we extended our news conversations. We made sure we had our personalities talking about those things, not necessarily sticking to the format, but getting that information that they were all craving because you can listen on your national news, but you want to hear what's going on in your own backyard. Uh, so I'm really proud of that. And I'm proud of what we did for a lot of our local businesses. I mean, we were able to keep doing what we were doing, but many were not. So obviously you had restaurants struggling and other businesses that could not open to capacity. So we made sure we did a lot of in-kind things saying, hey, make sure you visit your local advert or your local restaurant, do the takeout. You know, Joe's Auto Shop is open these hours. Get that message out because they're going to be back open. They're going to be our advertisers again. And even if they're not, we want our local community to succeed. So I was really proud of a, you know, a small, but very, you know, uh, a team that really just went on the fly to take care of those things. It's really interesting that that same feeling of, look, dollars matter, business matters. We've got goals to hit, but local really trumps all of that, doesn't it? It Absolutely. always has. And, and sounds like it always is. 
Absolutely. And remember, you know, when you hear that person, that's the, that's your friend, that's your neighbor there going, okay, yeah, if they're going through it, I'm going through it. So it, it's good to hear that voice. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's success. And I'm, you know, through all this, we're still thriving and doing well and, and serving a local community and making money. And, and I, I think uh, that's probably all part of the same story. So I'm interested, though, in Dash of Grit. What were some of the struggles along the way? You mentioned going from two stations, you know, and, and so along the way, there were hurdles that you had to overcome. Let's talk about some of those. What were some times that were really hard for you? Well, I, I think um, it's been almost like, gosh, it's hard to believe that, Brian, but it's been almost 20 years ago. Obviously, we were uh, bought by what was then JCAR that became Clear Channel as a conglomerate. And there was a merge of not only uh, what was the old, I think most people know as the old WMAN, and then you have Y105 and Y100 here. But then we also merged staffs with WNCO, FM, and AM, and also their additional staffs down in Mount Vernon. So at that time, uh, and I was not the market president, but I was the sales manager at that time, and you remember it well, we were taking two different staffs yep. that were, I, I will say in quotes, friendly competitors, <laughs> but still competitors. And we're going to say, now come together and we want you to work together. And initially, uh, that was not an easy thing for everyone to accept. And it wasn't because they didn't want to all be in it for the good. It was just, well, this is what I've done this way. This is what I've done this way. How do we make it happen? So yeah, if you want to go to when I was losing sleep, uh, yeah, that was then because you were trying, you wanted to make everybody happy, but you knew that you couldn't. And so it, a lot of, go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Oh no, I was going to wonder what was the biggest problem back there? Do you think it I was think it that was they everybody shared wanted, clients or? I don't think it was clients. I think they were, they were receptive to it. There might've been a little bit. I think a little bit was competitiveness on each, on everybody's side, because everybody said, well, I've developed this business on my particular, and I want to make sure that isn't infringed upon. And that's natural. Everybody wants to protect their own, I guess, land, if you will. I guess that's the best way to say it. So what we kind of had to do was kind of work together and, and make the best fit. Maybe somebody was better at calling on this client. Maybe somebody that was on the air on this station was better doing something. Some things we left alone. If it was good, why fix it? But if it was better served and we ran into, when you get into grit, yeah, you know, they say some mistakes are made and then you figure it out the better way. We ran into our own bumps. You know, we, we considered, well, we're going to sell it all this way, or we're just going to divvy up this way. And I would say probably and uh, for the first year or so, we kind of bumped our head and, and people inside the staff were a little confused. But then we kind of came to the edge and I had a great you know, market president, market manager at the time, Diana Kuhn, and we kind of worked things out. And we tried to talk to everybody to get it worked out to see what best fit them. But anytime it's changed, and I think at that time, uh, the former station managers mentioned, brought out the book, Who Moved My Cheese? And the cheese was moving every which way. Uh, at that time. And so, and there was a, a comfort level, but in the end, I think we came out stronger and we were able to come out as a, as a product that we could offer to our clients and our listeners by combining our forces. So, so I'm interested. It, it, it worked out, but at the time I remember I was part of the problem. I remember what? I wanted it. I wanted it my way. I didn't want it that way. I was right. They're wrong. We were competitors. I mean, that's just, that makes sense. But I'm wondering, I never asked you this. How did that make you feel? You mentioned keep you up at night when you were trying to merge these companies and, and merge these people. How did that make you feel I when it wasn't think, working quite well? I think you have to get past. And that was, you know, as I said, 20 years ago. So my mentality has changed a little bit. I think you're trying to make everybody happy. Hmm. And then you realize you can't initially. You may say, okay, that person is going to be upset with this decision I make temporarily but then something else will come around. And once I got past that, it was better, but that takes a while. That takes a while. Uh, so it, like I said, sometimes it was sitting down having a conversation with you or somebody else and saying, okay, how can we work together with this? Or how can you work with your other uh, counterpart on this? Maybe we find a new way, but mainly sometimes it was just getting through going, I'm going to have to make a decision. Not everybody's going to like. Was there ever a time when you and Diana just kind of got together and said, this just isn't going to work? Well, maybe we had a wine and thought about that. But in the end, I think we knew we had overall, we had an incredibly talented group of people, which might have been part of the problem because we did have talented people that wanted to make a success. So I didn't think we ever thought it was going to work. We just wanted to make sure we could keep all the balls up in the air and, you know, realize everybody's potential and get through that. And, and we did. Uh, and you did. Uh, in the end, you know, it came out and, and we came together stronger on that. 
Do you remember a time when it started to gel and you said, okay, this oh might have a way of, of working out? I think I, I've got, I've got to really go back to my brain on that. You know, I think when you or other reps were selling different stations, you were collaborating, we were coming back with a bigger share of the market on that. Same thing with our talent. You know, sometimes I focus a lot on sales at that time, but our talent was finding ways to work together, to be more involved in community events, instead of saying, this is my territory, this is your territory. When they realized that they could come together and make a bigger impact together in the community, that's when it started to gel. Yeah, that's the way I remember it too, not to make this about me, but I remember when we've all got on the same page trying to accomplish something together. It was something that I didn't even know you could do. I, I thought it was, I'm in this for myself. Yeah. And and I, I finally learned, I don't remember how, uh, but but no, I'm not in it for myself. We're in this together and we need to work together and we can work together. It was a whole different way of looking at it. Sure, absolutely. And I think that's part of the reason, I, like I said, I've been fortunate. I've been blessed with people who who have a vested interest in where they work. They have a vested interest in their community. It isn't just, okay, this is my stopover on the way to the next road. They've really tried to, you know, move up, build their careers, uh, you know, uh, with this company. And I've been very fortunate. And, you know, as I said, when I look, you were with us, what, 10 years? How long did you work? Yeah, I think, no, 20 years. I was 20 years. Gosh, yeah, yeah. you are old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. I am. <laughs> <laughs> but when you look at people that stay with a company like that, you've got to think there must be some reason that they're doing it because as mm -hmm. I said, they're, 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 they're doing what they want. They're building their careers. They're making the money they would like to, and they genuinely enjoy what they're doing. What are some of the inherent challenges that come with a small market and a large corporate running a small market, seven radio stations, competitive natures? Uh, what, what are some of the, the challenges that you deal with still on a daily basis? Well, sure. As far I as think sometimes, and I think this would be, whether it's radio, whether it's a manufacturing plant, sometimes I think there's a perception, well, if you know, this checks aren't sent to 1400 radio lane, you're really not a local business. Mm. And I, I, I take a lot of exception with that because, you know, I, I don't have data on that, but a lot of companies are, are not owned here locally or any place for that matter. But the people that work here invest their money here. Mm -hmm. They pay taxes here. Their kids are, you know, going to the same schools as they, uh, they're involved. And we care about our local community. Uh, you know, as I, you know, great example uh, of that is the fact, and I always go back to that is that is our local sports coverage. You know, I'm, fortunate that I have Aaron Hines as a sports director. And, and, you know, right now we're working with all the coaches to figure out, okay, and, and it's a jigsaw puzzle, as you know, where are we going this week? How do we get these games broadcast? Because we know how important that is to our local community. The same thing can be said for all the different charities that we try and support and trying to get the message out on many things. I mean, we do a lot of things for the Pat Crocker Breast Cancer Fund right now. We're doing Adopt-A-Duck. Uh, we work very closely with the Richland County Foundation. So even though Yes, we're owned by iHeart, and, and I don't shy away from that because, as we say, yeah, people listen to their local radio, but they're also it's also okay if they're listening to Bobby Bones, who may not be sitting right there, you know, in Mansfield, Ohio, but he's become their friend that they listen to, and we're still giving them local information. And in this day and age, you know, it's, it's hard to make an impact. You can access, and you know this better than anybody, access information any way that you can. But I'm, even though I'm owned by a you know a corporate, I'm very local, and I feel very fortunate that I'm able to give some of the benefits of being owned by a, a large corporation. Because when I talk to a client, not only do I have okay, you know, here's the local things that we're doing, but here's some other platforms that we can offer as well. Be it, as I said, be it our influencers, you know, podcasts, digital things, just so many different things that we're able to bring to the table because I have those resources behind me. And that only helps build a local business, which if I don't build local business here, it doesn't matter who owns me. When, when someone says you're not local, or when someone uses a different medium, for instance, you know, lots of, like you said, aren't local and yet they feel that they are. How does that make you feel? And what does it make you want to fight back or, or what, what do you do to, to counter that in your own mind? How did yourself, how do you get over that? Uh, I, I think I have to go back and reference what we do. And, and, and yeah, there's a competitive part of me or I wouldn't be in this business. Mm -hmm. it, yes. Yeah. I definitely feel that we're local. Yeah. And, and make sure, you know, if I have the opportunity, I, I would obviously, you know, 
anytime anybody's doing any type of media, I'm always happy. And, and I like to think that, you know, most of us, we work pretty well together uh, in this small media markets that we have. But certainly I, I do take issue in a friendly way. And I, I'm always happy to list the things that, yes, this is what we're involved in. This is the interview that we just did with the, you know, the Reed Richmond with the health commissioner. This is the interview we're doing with this, or we were out covering this when we were out covering things. <laughs> as yeah, much right. as being out and things. But, you know, uh, as I say, we're kind of the hardest working people that we possibly can be to make sure we do keep that local. So, yeah. Yeah. But why does that matter? Because, because you could, you could simulcast everything. You could run this place on a dime. Like, why does it matter to you that you're local? What's the big deal? Because I think we're local is relevant to our listeners. They yeah. still want to hear that type of voice coming to them. They want to be able to know that, okay, Aaron Hines is talking about, you know, right now, this may be happening nationally, and there's so many things happening nationally. But right now, hey, is Aaron Hines talking about the fact that Shelby's in the playoffs? Hmm. Those things matter to them. They want to know, oh, my gosh, something happened on 71. I, I guess I need to know what's going on with that. And they want to share somewhat in the same experiences. So if everybody's talking about, hey, did you hit the new Kingwood Center yet? And, you know, uh, Chris is talking about it on his show going, I was there, beautiful place. You can't, it's a shared experience. And I'm certainly, we all know that we, we watch TV and most of those people are not sitting, you know, right here in Mansfield, Ohio, and we're on social media and they're not, but it's still important to talk about where you live. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, when I asked the question, I asked it because I know the answer because I, I still live here 30 years later, yeah. you still live here all, and, and we just love this community and we want it to to thrive and so absolutely and you know what it's still a thrill it's it's these little things i'll give it you know we have an athlete of the week and that's still a thrill for yeah. a parent to hear or the kid to go hey i was the athlete of the week or i made the heck of the play on the game and it's like you know kudos to you so that it yeah. still matters we all want to see what's going on with you know what's going on in the nation but it matters what here it's yeah it's yeah, that this, that gets back to that ego thing this hits us right here where we live which is the definition of that and so what's what's next i really don't know the idea what what's the struggle that you have to overcome now of course there's covid but is what what sure. what do you need to I fight think, back on now i think you have to remain relevant you know you know this i was watching something last night and i was talking about the era when it was all newspapers delivering news and all of a sudden radio hit and i thought to myself it's kind of what we're going through right now. Obviously, there was radio, radio, and then this thing that Al Gore invented came with the internet, and then everything is <laughs> taken off with yeah. social media, and there's so many different platforms. Surprisingly, I shouldn't say surprisingly, actually, through it all, broadcast radio is still one of the most trusted mediums, actually the most trusted medium. It actually came through in, the, in a lot of research during the pandemic. So for us, as our audiences and everything, everybody's on so many different mediums, we have to remain relevant to them. So we've got to reach them in different ways, not only our listeners, but our advertisers. So, you know, if, if it's Aaron Hines is talking about Kingwood Center or whatever he's doing in a game on Facebook and reaching our listeners in a different way as well, using influencers, you know, nobody's better than a local influencer to talk about that. And even to the point of using some of our shows like a Bobby Bones or a Dave and Jimmy to use some of those same products. Also, you know, making sure for our advertisers, we present all those products to them as well, because they're just as confused. I think sometimes of looking at us like, what do we do next? We can't keep up with all of these changes. And I know it's hard for all of us to go, okay, here's this, here's that. Mm -hmm. So I think radio has to be relevant. So you've got to stay topical in our particular market. You have to be local. You have to be talking to what they're interested in. And if you do that and embrace the different platforms, you can't run away from them. You have to embrace them so that you're there at the tip of their fingers and going, oh, yeah, I just saw Chris talking about the uh, Humane Society Pet of the Week on Facebook. And then you heard him talk about the radio. So yeah. that's that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. And it's probably going to be a challenge forevermore for all of us. How to stay yeah, relevant I, and I never change so. your world. I, you know, our, our fearless leader, Bob Pittman, um, he uses a phrase that chaos is okay. And, and mm. we're, if, if anybody's in been in that, <laughs> we're all in that right now. But from chaos, I think has emerged a lot of great ideas uh, actually since the pandemic began. And, and we're learning how to maneuver our way through it. 
Yeah. Well, Margie, I know you've, you've seen it all and you've seen the change and you've seen, uh, and you've kind of been at the helm of man, you making sure that change worked and worked positively for your company. And, and so I know there's people out there that are either local and interested in local radio advertising options or right. shows. Uh, they might also be interested in your story too, and how you can help them as a, as an organizational exactly. leader. So how would they reach out to you and contact um, you? A couple different ways. They can phone me, uh, at 419-529-2211. And they can also reach out to me at Margie Tassif at iHeartMedia.com. That's as easy as it comes. And one thing I'll add, you talk about radio being relevant, and I think this uh, this will appeal right to you, Brian. I was thinking probably one of the most back-to-normal things that I heard this summer was when I heard Tom Hamilton call an Indians game. And Mm. I thought, that's what radio is all about. Life is kind of back to normal. I'm hearing that voice. Yeah. Yeah, so, you knew things were going to be okay when, exactly. when that radio was on and it sounded right and the right voice was coming out of it. And absolutely, it, the it world's upside of, down. <laughs> yeah, everything else may be going on, but Tom Hamilton is calling yeah. a game. Yeah, and that's the beauty of radio forever. Absolutely, so, Margie Tassif, thank you so much. Thank for you, Brian, being, for having yes, me. I enjoyed thank this. Thank you for being a, uh, a a great influencer for me, even though I didn't always say it. But I, I do appreciate oh, well, our our relationship and and uh, and look forward to working with you many times over. Well, uh, thank you, Brian. As I said, it was great to work with you too. Thank you. Despite a quick all plug. Fun times. Oh, we've had them, and we've had them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> If anyone knows me, it's not, it wasn't your fault. Just just know that any any <laughs> troubles that we have were not on you. They were on me, and I've learned that. So. A uh, uh, quick plug for those of us here at Spire. Dash of Grid is brought to you uh, by us at Spire. And uh, we're a little bit different than other marketing companies. We want you to know that we don't sugarcoat things. If you have uh, seen marketing agencies that kind of tell you what you need to know just to keep your business, that's not us. And so if you'd like to talk to us about that, just go ahead and reach out, spiread.com. You can email me, brian at spiread.com. That's with a Y. Uh, easily to do there. So I'm Brian Leffelock, Director of Sales with Spire. Thank you again to Margie Tassif. She is Market Director for Market President for the North Central Ohio iHeart Communication Stations in Ashland and Mansfield. This has been a Dash of Grit. Thank you, Margie. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. This is a Dash of Grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things. 